let's look at what happens here when I attach it. So here's our fatigue with it off, and here's our fatigue with it on. 80 additional points of fatigue just for putting on a helmet. This is ridiculous. Ladies and gentlemen, our quest for today's artifact begins in the hive of scum, treachery, and villainy itself. Dagenfell in the Shia Gorad region. Ah yes, the gate to Shia Gorad. The 20 people that live here and all of their interesting items and quests that don't exist because the only thing that Dagenfell is good for is getting access to all of the islands around it uh, because the only things really out here are dungeons, Daedric shrines, Slaughterfish, and Cliff Racers. So if you're into that kind of stuff, which if you're playing Marwind, I assume you are. Well, then Daggerfell's your town, man, because there's nothing else even near it to get over to Sheer Gorad. But enough, enough complaining about Marwind's public transport system. We do that enough, at least here in my own home. So what we're going to do is begin by leaving Daggerfell to the west, and we're going to want to start making our way just past Sanctus Shrine to a Daedric ruin of Asser Dirapal, and in Asser Dirapal, we will find a shrine to Malakath that will let us begin a quest that will reward us with the most broken, most busted, most overpowered helmet in the game. Pretty much uncontested when I say that for sure. Now, I know I've made a video about the best helmet not in the game before talking about the Helm of Tohan. But the thing about the Helm of Tohan is it simply is the most enchantable helmet in the game. So if you're an enchanter, you want to throw on a bunch of custom enchantments. Hey, there is an argument that the Helm of Orin Bearclaw is worse than that. But if you are not an enchanter, you're just a character who wants to go grave rob, do a bunch of quests, pad your artifact sheets, get a high attribute level, well, then this cannot be ignored. And really, I don't see a character that doesn't want to use the helm of Orin Bearclaw. And holy crap, I'm being attacked by orcs. One second. What? Where did these guys come from? Okay, hold on, hold on. God, we got uh, so much going on right here. Luckily, Chrysomir hits like a frickin' train. Get that out of here. Oh, okay, there we go. Jeez, right in the middle of my monologue. That's, <laughs> that's what always happens. I record a video, they always attack. They're like, that guy's in the middle of a sentence. Kill him. All right, I have no idea what those guys were for, and I don't really have the time to care right now because we're live. We're recording, baby. So uh, let's go back to talking about today's artifact, which is, the, again, the helm of Orin Bearclaw. As I mentioned, pretty much every character can utilize this helm, and you'll see why once we collect it, unless, of course, you are very against using heavy armor. In that case, you'll want to pick another option for your helmet. But if not, get this on your character and do it today. It'll change your freaking life, I promise. Oh, come on, another cliff racer. Again, I told you, it's this freaking Shiagorad region. They just spawn. They're coming out of the freaking woodwork how do, what, how do they they come out of the mushrooms like what is what is this i feel like enemy spawns and sheer gorad are just absolutely insane rivaled only by tribunal and blood moon i must say <laughs> but anyways as we finish our adventure over to asher Dirpal, uh, which we are almost there seeing as we are coming up on sanctish shrine here let me cue up a little bit of the lore behind the helm of Orin Bearclaw, because it is quite an interesting little artifact, I must say. Now, the story begins right in the name, the helm of Orin Bearclaw, Orin Bearclaw being a famous Dunmary hunter from Bosmer legends. So he was a Dunmer that lived in Valenwood and killed a witch serpent, which I can hardly imagine what that is. And the only thing tougher to imagine than what a witch serpent is, is the name of the witch serpent. I'm just going to throw it on the screen and go after it yourself. Let me know. Let me know if you can pull that one off. <laughs> but Orin uh, himself became a bit of a Herculean figure to the Bosmeri people. After killing the witch serpent, freeing his clan of her influence and terror, he did a number of other heroic deeds and became etched into the annals of history. But you see, that right there, he etched himself into the annals of history, is where it becomes a little contested. Because, you see, to the Orzimer people, this is not the helm of Orin Bearclaw. This is, in fact, the helm of Karag Grokar, Orin's companion and, I guess, sidekick, you could say, because the orcs claim that Orin actually didn't do anything. Orin is just a thief of the limelight from Karag Grokarn. And the helm of Orin Bearclaw is not, in fact, the helm of Orin Bearclaw, but the helm of Karag Grokarn. 
See, I, I wonder what this guy thinks. Who do you believe? I don't know who to believe. Cannibals? Orcs? It's up in the air. And we'll find a little bit more about that lore uh, as well as we are now here at Aster Dira Paul. I'll throw up a look at the map here so you can get here yourself. And we can now begin this quest. So let's kill these scamps and then move in while we start to think about what the heck we're actually getting after. It's a broken helmet. It's a contested helmet in the lore, and we're gonna get it today. So let's dive into the shrine. Now, once we're inside, we wanna go right into the inner shrine. Again, start laying down the pain, as I mentioned. Okay, no fatigue, but ooh, look at that. Chris Amir, oh my God. I forget how freaking incredible this is. Let's see, does this orc have anything decent on him? No, sad. But hey, we can we can handle it because it's about to get incredible at the end of this video. All right, now we just need to make our way down. So let's hop here on the shrine. Okay, not that bad. Step down. Oh, he's waiting for us. Okay, shouldn't be too bad though. Let's hop off. Draymora, lay down some paint on him. Didn't even stand a chance. Okay, there we go. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen, in Aster Deer Paul, the inner shrine, and that right there is what we were looking for. This is the Daedric Shrine of Malakath. Again, tying into that lore, Malakath is, of course, the patron god of the orcs. So you can kind of see what this quest is gonna be about. Now let's talk to the statue, see what he's gotta say. You have summoned me. You are all the same. <laughs> but perhaps you can be of use to me. Wes Johnson, baby. So we came for. But he was a false hero. <gasps> All were performed by Karak Brokar, his orcish friend. It is time this legend was put to rest. Find the last of his bloodline. He the last. And I will grant you the helm. For him in the city where the man god lives. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the quest of Malakath, the patron god to the Orzammar people. He has found what he believes to be the final descendant of Orin Bearclaw, and he wants to set the record straight and get Karag Grokarn that fame and fortune like we mentioned earlier in the video. Now, before we continue the quest, it is absolutely crucial that you mark this location because you will have to come back here. And as you saw, the run over from Dagenfell, not too fun. So there we go. We just set our mark. Let's grab our um, CV intervention now and head on and start this quest. So now we've arrived in Nissus. And what Malakath said is head to the whatever where the bad god lives. Just summarizing there. <laughs> but uh, we know that this is the town of Narmak. If you were, of course, playing this through naturally, you weren't just trying to find the artifact, you would have to ask around, discover this path for yourself. But if you're watching a video on how to get the helm, let's cut to the chase here, people. So let's go ahead from Nissus. Let's travel to Sedanine. From Sedanine, let's travel to Vivek. And then from Vivek, we want to head over to the boat down yonder there by the water. He lives in a boat by the river. Horrible SNL <laughs> reference, but we'll speak to Anno and Darum, and we'll complete our penultimate travel by heading to Hala Oud or Hala Awad. Uh, I always say Awad, got a little more flavor in it, right? A little more spice. Life's about having fun. I like having a good time. Hala Awad. So it's got a nice ring to it to me. But once we're in Hala Awad or Oud, whichever you prefer, let's travel our final time to the city where the mad god lives, Narmak. I don't know why Malakath says that. I feel like the city where the mad god lives would be like Las Vegas or something. But anyways, once we're in Narmak, we basically just want to head a little bit south of the city and you will see some corpses of some bull netches off in the distance. And that actually is where Farvin Orin, the last of the bloodline lives. So we'll find him here. And there he has two bodyguards with him. And now I will say, if you're trying this, oh, bastard, hold on. Now I will say, if you are trying this at a lower level, Farvin isn't the issue. The issue are the bodyguards. They actually slap pretty hard. So just keep that in mind. But let's talk to Farvin first because th there's more of a story here than you would expect. So Farvin, talk about Orin Bearclaw. We gotta know, who who had the helm? Orin Bearclaw, my most wonderful ancestor, father of my father's father. He began the Orin tradition of helping the helpless. Well, 
Okay, that sounds great, but what about Karag? Karag? Who? Oh, the orc? I'm sure I don't know. All right, stranger. It's all true. Do you think it's easy carrying on this kind of family name? Everyone expects a lot, you know? Of course, it doesn't have the benefits, the adoration of everyone, the imperial stipend. Why have you sought me out, then? And so I say that I come on the behest of Malakath to end this lie. Again, Farvin is backing up that this is, in fact, a lie, which is pretty integral. So let's, uh, let's click this. And he says, well, if that is how it must be, kill this fool. And I say to that, I would love to see you try. So let's keep moving here. Make sure we're just dodging spells. Ooh. Ooh, Farvin hits pretty hard with that spell. Okay, let's get in close. Take him out. And then let's deal with the final bodyguard. There you have it. <laughs> that is not... That is, that, where's the warrior blood, Farvin? I expected more of a challenge. I'm level 11. Come on, buddy. You got, you got to do a little bit better than that. Let's at least see. Does he have anything exciting on him? The blood despair amulet, third barrier amulet, flame axe. Nope, nothing even good. But what is important here is that we got, your journal is updated. And let's read that journal real quick because the referee <laughs> has got some things to say about Farvin. I've killed Farvin Orin. He was, as I expected, remarkably weak for one of such a distinguished bloodline. <laughs> His guards were, however, as strong as they looked. So, hey, maybe there's a little bit to this lie. Maybe, maybe it is Karag's helmet. I guess we don't really know. But let's see what Malakath has to say about all this and return to Asur Dirapal and collect the helm itself. Here we are. All right, Malakath, I have done your dirty work. Bestow upon me the helm of game-breaking attributes. False hero. Orion, oh god. Well, apparently I've been saying it wrong the whole video. But I stand by that, just like La Ode and La Wad and Call Cool. Tomato, tomato, come on. But before we look at the stats, let's close up the lore end. And you see, Malakath right there said, you ended the line of Orion Bearclaw and restored honor to the Orcish people. Well, Malakath must not have known that Oblivion was in development because the second in command of the Cyrodelic Fighters Guild is actually a descendant also of Orion Bearclaw. And in fact, you can get the helm of Orion Bearclaw in Oblivion as well, once you are the master of the Fighters Guild, and tying back into the conflicting stories between the two people, although the descendant of Orion in Morrowind agrees with Malakath that the orc did everything, the descendant in Oblivion stands by his ancestor's legacy and says, no, that's wrong, this is the helm of Orion Bearclaw. So just another example of the lore that is self-conflicting in the Elder Scrolls that we are also very familiar with. But that being said, enough with the lore class here. Let's look at this item. So here we have it, the helm of Orion Bearclaw, armor rating 204, value 125,000 gold, with a constant effect enchantment, fortify attribute agility 40 points, fortify attribute endurance 40 points, Constant effect, people. This this blows the doors off every attribute bonus given by any birth signs or even any other items. 40 points. Constant effect is absolutely absurd. This is an incredible artifact for any warrior that wants to be worth his salt. You're going to become very tanky and have a really high fatigue pool. In fact, let's look at what happens here when I attach it. So here's our fatigue with it off. And here's our fatigue with it on. 80 additional points of fatigue just for putting on a helmet. This is ridiculous. Orion Bearclaw's helmet, regardless of which side of the lore you stand on, is a cannot miss item. Surprisingly, is often missed because it's hidden out in the depths of the Shiagorad region at the bottom of Asur Dirapal. And you have to speak to a statue to get the quest, which is not super intuitive. 
in and of itself. So with that said, that's all I got for you today, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. The support on the channel recently has been phenomenal. I am absolutely blown away. But that's going to do it for me here today. And as always, I will catch you on the next one. I just killed that script. Ha, ha, ha.